Hi, hello, wagwan. Welcome to another true crime story episode thingamajig. And I'm gonna get stuck right into this one because I don't think that it's a case that needs a lot of preamble. And even if you don't know the story, you're gonna get it pretty quickly. When you Google the name Phil Spector, when you look at his Wikipedia, his biography, it tells you about his music career the musical legacy left behind when he died of COVID earlier on in 2021. It doesn't take that much digging, but too much for my liking to get past the Beatles accolades, to get past the Grammy awards, to see the case that I'm talking about today. When he passed away in January, it was all an ode to a legend, as opposed to speaking about the murderer who died in prison. It was this week in 2003 that Phil Spector committed a murder. And whilst, yes, of course, it is Phil Spector that I'm speaking about today, he murdered Lana Clarkson. Welcome to the anniversary. I want to skip past the oohs and the ahs of Phil Spector's career and his musical history for this case, otherwise we'd be here all day. He is rightly so up there with, you know, the greatest music producers. But one of the reasons that I started this series, this thing that you're watching, was obviously to share my love of true crime, but also to focus a little bit more on the victims than the perpetrators of violent crime where I can. I think that a lot, most, a lot, lots of the media that we consume focuses on the murderer and I've said this before the victims are often left nameless or they're just props in the story this episode is about Lana Clarkson she was an American actress and model she was born in California in 1962 and she rose to fame in the 1980s earlier in the decade she had bit parts in film and telly she got her first break with a minor character in Fast Times at Ridgemont High in 1982. She was an extra in Scarface, dancing behind Michelle Pfeiffer. Pretty sick. I want to be an extra in Harry Potter, so don't dull on the extras, you know? She soon settled into sci-fi and fantasy where she had quite a busy career. I haven't seen many of the movies that she was in, but there are lots on her Wikipedia page, and if I can find some posters, I'll pop them here for you as well. She traveled the world, working as a fashion model. She worked in Japan, in Mexico, in Greece, in Argentina, in Jamaica, to name a few. She was a volunteer. She spent time weekly at the AIDS charity Project Angel Food, and I mention this because this was in the 80s of course in the 90s which was a time when the general public had such a fear of those who have AIDS and HIV in the 80s and 90s people were scared to even touch people who had AIDS or HIV so I just wanted to add that in there that she was a pretty cool lady her film career didn't continue throughout the whole of her life at the time of her death, she had all but stopped working on the front side of the camera. She did establish her own production company. It didn't really do bits, but then she was working at the House of Blues in West Hollywood. And I had a look at that, and it's one of those kind of live music, um, exclusive type venues. I feel like if you think of Cabaret or like Ronnie Scott's, I think it's called in London, that sort of thing where you get live music, you get a bit of booze and often you can get a celeb or two in there as well. And it was here that she met the man who would kill her, Phil Spector. It was on the morning of February 3rd, 18 years ago, that Lana was found dead in the record producer's mansion. He initially tried to claim that her death was accidental suicide, but eventually he was charged with second degree murder. He lived in a nine bedroom estate in California. They used to call it the Pyrenees Castle and he had bought it in 1998. It was in the early hours of the morning that Phil Spector's driver called 911 when he said that he heard a gunshot and his boss ran out of the estate carrying a gun. 911, what are you reporting? Hi, it's, uh, my name is Adriano. I think my boss killed somebody. Now, why do you believe he may have killed somebody? Because you have a lady on the, on the floor and he has a gun on, the, on his hand. On that 911 call, Phil Spector is quoted as saying, I think I killed someone, which was a crux, it was a big issue and something the prosecution held on to during the trials. Lana Clarkson's body was found slumped in a chair with a single gunshot wound to her mouth and broken teeth scattered on the carpet. In an interview with Esquire magazine later that year, uh, he was out, he was free on a one million bond bail, which is a mad thing to me because I don't think any amount of money should make you free if people think you killed someone, but whatever. 
He spoke to Esquire magazine and he said that her death was an accidental suicide, that she had kissed the gun. But the coroner at the trial told a very different story to the one that Phil Spector said had happened. Jurors were shown graphic and sometimes shocking images uh, of what had been done to Lana's face and the inside of her mouth as well. Her family were present throughout the whole of the court process, but they left the room on this particular day. There was very specific bruising to the top of her mouth, consistent with force, as if someone had shoved the gun into her mouth, as opposed to kissing the gun as Phil said she did. And according actually to the prosecution, this wasn't the first time that Phil Spector had pulled a gun on a woman, it was actually the fifth. In each case, the four times previous, he'd been drinking as he had on the day that Lana died. Uh, I read in one of the articles that I'll link in the description that he was belligerent, that he couldn't even speak when the police came to chat to him after she had been murdered. And in each of those four cases as well, he was romantically interested in the woman, but he grew angry after she had spurned him. The prosecution alleged that on each occasion, he pointed a gun at a woman to prevent her from walking out. Whilst this, of course, is quite telling, it's really rare for a judge to allow previous behaviours to influence a current court trial going on. The defence, of course, they didn't want the women to testify, but the judge ruled that the testimony can be used to show a lack of accident or mistake as per Phil Spector's defence. His driver, of course, the man who called 911, said that he saw his boss come out of the house with a gun in his hands and only Phil Spector's fingerprints were found on the gun, not Lana's. But there were two trials in this case. The first was ruled as a mistrial when the jury was stuck at 10 to 2 in favour of guilty. And during the second trial, Phil Spector was found guilty and sentenced to 19 years to life in prison. Um, the defendant is sentenced to uh, the term uh, required by law, 15 years to life on his conviction for uh, second degree murder. Phil Spector gets 19 years to life in prison in the murder of actress Lena Clarkson. A Los Angeles judge sentenced Spector on Friday to 15 years to life for second degree murder and four years for personal use of a gun. Of course, there were many appeals, but he remained in prison until he died early this year. He would have become eligible for parole in 2024. And when he died, the newspapers and news stations, they really hammered home the superstar that he was in music, his work with the Beatles, how he influenced Amy Winehouse and how much of a genius he was. They mentioned Lana, but not in a way that was the headline, and this is the question that I want to ask you. When is it okay to blur the lines between someone's actions and someone's reputation? You've got someone here who, quite rightly, is in the Hall of Fame. You know, if you Google this guy, I've got links in the description as well, his accolades are on accolades are on accolades. This is your favourite rapper's favourite rapper, but he murdered somebody. When the news are reporting anything about him, it's not Phil Spector murderer that they're reporting reporting on, it's Phil Spector, legendary music producer. And is that okay? Of course, there's a huge famous case of R. Kelly. Do we never ever speak of any of his music ever again because of ro what Robert Kelly, the person, the, the, the criminal has done? Phil Spector, do we never speak or think or thank him for giving us the Beatles because Harvey Phillips Spector was a murderer? I just want to know what everyone thinks. I, I, of course, have my own opinions. I find it really difficult to separate the art from the person. I think that if you're a bad guy, you're a bad guy, and I don't think you deserve any accolades whatsoever. If somebody plays R. Kelly around me, oh, the look. The look. But this isn't about what I think. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments just your thoughts, your feelings, and how you feel about separating the artist, the legend, from the deeds. And thank you for watching as well, of course.